All right, uh, so in this video, we're going to cover how to use mesh grid uh, to solve uh, combinatorial problems where you have two variables and you want to find a, all the answers uh, that relate to uh, any combination of those two uh, variable sets. And I gave a class in class example. I'm going to do the same thing again here. I think uh, pressure, volume, temperature is a great example of, of um, uh, three values where two varies, the other one's set by that. And so this is a kind of a good example of this problem. So uh, in this one, we'll do the same thing. So what am I saying? Well, in a data set, we can actually go ahead. I'm, I'm going to set this up in a script uh, as another example of how to set up a script file. Um, and we're going to go back and forth, and I'm going to kind of show you how to play with MATLAB in a way to try things out and get it to uh, uh, work in your favor. Uh, importantly, you can program things in the script that you want like, to submit as homework or as a file or, or as the actual answer, but if you want to see how something's going to work and how things might behave, uh, you can go back and forth between the script and then the command window to play with that. So, to start with, I'm going to set the temperatures that we're interested in. So, I'm going to set temp is equal to, and we'll go from a range of 100, um, and we'll do this in increments of 10 degrees, maybe to, uh, say, 400 degrees C. So, that sounds good. Um, and we have that. We're going to uh, do that, say. So, we know that now. Now, let's look into our pressure range. Uh, and our pressure range is going to be, um, what did I say? Let's say uh, pressure will equal to, um, and so we're going to take the pressure range in uh, atmospheres, let's say from point 0 0.5, and we'll do increments of point 0.1 to 10, I guess. Uh, no, that seems pretty big, but let's say 5. Okay, and we'll go there. And then this range, which seemed pretty, pretty reasonable to assume ideal gas is valid, so we're just going to assume the ideal gas, uh, ideal gas law. Uh, ideal gas law. There you go. And that's just going to be that our PV equals RT. And we're going to say our volume that we're calculating for is going to equal to RT over P. All right. So we need an ideal gas constant. So R is going to equal to uh, 0.08206, I believe. And I'm going to say star. This is uh, liters atmosphere atmosphere per mole per Kelvin. There you go. So that's our ideal gas constant. Now, initially, if I was to go ahead and say, okay, well, I'm going to uh, uh, specify our solution as equal to volume as equal to uh, zero um, as equal to temp dot times or uh, uh, dot um, dot times r dot time or divided by dot divided by pressure. Ta okay, and we can try this out. I'm just going to copy all this, paste it here. Oh, and we get an error. Matrix dimensions must agree. Well, clearly, pressure and temperature are not in the same dimensions. And that's not what we want. And actually, we would think that, in truth, if they did agree, that would mean that the only thing that would happen would be give us an answer that was uh, 46 values. So it wouldn't actually give us every single combination of pressure and temperature that we wanted. And that is where the mesh grid function comes into play. So I'm going to come over here, and we're going to open up mesh grid. And we're gonna, I mean, we're going to run mesh grid to get the actual value that we want. Now, the mesh grid creates a range of, in, of values that have matched dimensions of temperature and pressure. It, it fixes this problem of in, mismatched uh, pressures, and it makes sure that it puts everything, uh, it repeats the values over and over again, so that temperatures, say, will be repeated down, and pressures will be repeated across, so in a in a uh, orthogonal way, so that every value of temperature will cross react or cross uh, multiply with a value of pressure. That is the point of the mesh grid. So if I said 
I have to define two new values. So I'm going to call new temp and new press. And we're going to equal that to the mesh grid of, and it's temp press. Note the order that these are in are the same order that we're putting in here. Enter. And now all we have to do is change this value to new. temp and new press and this is lowercase new and we're going to let that be and let's try it again copy and paste that enter and we get a value and you'll notice now this value is in every position every value of of uh, volume it's 46 uh, 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 rows long and 31 columns meaning that every row and if you look here every row represents a different pressure and every column represents a different temperature so if you look at this way if I was just look at what the the new press is it's repeating the same values for each column over and over again. And it's only different in the rows. So the rows are the volume changes. And if I look at in the temperature, new temp, it's varying in the column dimension. So every going across this way, we have uh, it's getting hotter and hotter. So if I look at the volume array that we have created in this position. I'm going all the way to the beginning, just so you can see the beginning of the array volume here of columns 1 through 8. Going this direction, the gas is getting hotter. And going down this way, pressure is increasing. So does this make sense? Well, think about it. As we're increasing pressure, volume should go down, and sure enough, that's exactly what happens. And as we increase temperature, volume should increase. And sure enough, that is what's happening. So you can get a sense of just how much data you can calculate and get information from this uh, in a very simple set of just three, four lines of code gave us this vast array or volume data that we didn't have before. Now in the next uh, uh, run of videos, I'm going to show how you can actually take this and use this data to get visual information from this and show you a little bit more about how to plot uh, these results and see uh, what all this means in um, uh, from a visual framework. So uh, that'll be the next few videos uh, on hand. So thanks a lot. Bye.